In a moment, I'm going to give you folks a problem to try on your own. Before I do that, I want to just take a look at a function composition that it's really easy to miss. Let's say I wanted to take the derivative of sine of 2x. A lot of times people think, well, the chain rule deals with function compositions, and function compositions look complicated. This doesn't look super complicated, but it's a function composition because my input to the sine function isn't just x, it's 2x. So that's a function composition. It's a relatively simple one. It's not as complicated as taking sine of cosine of x, but it's still a function composition. So when we take the derivative, this is going to become the derivative of sine, which is cosine, evaluated at that same place, at 2x and then multiplied by the derivative of 2x. Now, the derivative of 2x is just 2. And I'll usually bump a constant to the very front, so I would say this is 2 cosine of 2x. But that's something where it looks deceptively simple, and so it's sometimes people miss that they still need to use the chain rule there. Okay. With that as a caution, I'm going to give you f of x equals cosine of 3x times sine of the square root of x, and I'd like you to find for me the derivative. Okay, pause the video, work that one out. Alright, I've got this worked out here on the board. I do want to just mention having these parentheses around the 3x and the root x sort of highlights that they're the inside part that's being plugged into those functions, but it's not necessary to have those written. So you could write that as cosine 3x sine root x. Often when I'm using the chain rule, I will choose to write in parentheses to make that clearer. As I worked through the problem, I got really tired of writing parentheses, so you'll see that by the end I'm not writing them around the input to sine and cosine. All right, looking at this, I recognize that that's a cosine of 3x, a sine of root x. Those are two different functions connected by multiplication. So the first step was just to use product rule. So we're going to have the derivative of 3x times sine of root x plus cosine of 3x times the derivative of sine of root x. Okay. All right, here the derivative of cosine of 3x, that's a function composition. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and I evaluate that at 3x, and then we're going to have to multiply by the derivative of 3x. Now, I know that's just 3. If you were comfortable evaluating that at this point, that's totally fine. I'm still, because the chain rule is still relatively new, I'm still always going to just explicitly write that I'm multiplying by the derivative of the inside part. But for many of you, as you get comfortable with it, you'll be able to start just doing that in one step. And you need to judge whether that's leading you to make careless errors, in which case it's not worth being a little bit faster, or whether you're just finding it really tedious to write this and you really do get it and can skip that step. It's going to vary from student to student. Okay, and then that was still multiplied by sine of root x, and then times cosine of, three, of 3x times I needed to take the derivative here. So this was, again, a function composition where the inside part was root x. So the derivative of sine is cosine. That's evaluated at root x. And then I have to take the derivative of that square root. Now you'll notice, once I'm going to take the derivative, I rewrote that as x to the 1 half. Often, I'll do that at the very beginning of a problem. I'll just write it as x to the 1 half so that I'm writing it the same way every time. Perfectly acceptable to keep it as root x and only rewrite it as the fractional exponent when that becomes useful, which is what I did here. It wasn't actually a, a conscious plan. I just sort of forgot to rewrite that earlier. And I said, well, it doesn't really matter until we get here where I'm going to want to use the power rule. Okay. So then I went back, this d by dx became that 3 right there. And then this d by dx became 1 half x to the negative 1 half. At this point, 
I'm done, I've taken the derivative. What I usually do is I like to bump constants to the front, so I took that three and I bumped it to the front. That way, I don't need parentheses around this 3x, um, but I would need parentheses to separate that 3 right there if I had that. Um, and here, I bumped not just the 1 half to the front, but also the x to the negative 1 half. That was so that it was clear that that wasn't getting plugged into cosine. So that for all of these, what we've got is whatever comes immediately after the trig function is what's being plugged into the trig function. Generally speaking, people are not going to interpret that as cosine of 3 times x. If we meant that, we'd use parentheses to separate the 3 and the x. Okay.